Sometimes a discovery is found in a video game that appears to be directly from hell. In the spirit of today's sponsor, the mysterious online game Devil's Game. Today I thought we'd take a look at some of the most hauntingly devilish discoveries that were ever found in video games. Cyberpunk 2077 Thanks to Robert Bertium for submitting this mystery on oddheader.com. Well, it was only a matter of time before Cyberpunk 2077 ended up on the channel, having been in development for nearly 10 years and released to some rather rocky results. Nevertheless, I still think it's a pretty cool game, mainly due to its large number of interesting mysteries and discoveries. For example, after beating the game, Robert decided to go to this building to room 301, which he noticed was visible in the background two missions earlier in the game, but didn't seem to have anything to do with the story. Robert noticed he could peek inside the room because the door was ajar but was blocked from actually entering. Fortunately, Robert was able to no-click into the room and found inside what appeared to be deranged scribblings all over the walls. There appears to have been messages written from floor to ceiling by somebody who was possibly trapped inside, but it's mostly illegible and scribbled over completely, overlaid with one clear message, I am not me. Well, it sounds like the person who did this doesn't know who did it either. There's not anything in the game that suggests what any of this is supposed to mean. Considering DLC was delayed and so much of this game still appears unfinished, we might not be finding out anytime soon. And with its rollercoaster development in mind and release unlike anything I've ever seen, I wouldn't be totally surprised if this was a cry for help. People Playground Thanks for the people down below for submitting this through the OnHeader website and Discord. People Playground is a game where I'm not really sure. The most I can say about People Playground is it's an incredibly disturbing game that showed up on Steam in 2019 where you can endlessly simulate all sorts of pain on these humanoid... whatever these are. But beyond that, the game has only managed to confuse its player base, mainly over what exactly its basic premise is, with theories ranging from an alien facility experimenting how to eradicate humans, to a PTSD fever dream to the vengeance of AI against humanity, or even it just being a game stop looking into things so much. Even so, everyone is confused about a number of unusual discoveries in the game, some of which were even outright removed, that seemingly confirm there's definitely more here than meets the eye. For example, when random spots hidden throughout the game can be heard extremely hellish audio in an otherwise musicless game, that very appropriately are each named in the game files Hell A through D. There was also once a radio hidden outside the boundaries of one of the maps that would play highly suspicious audio if you were to linger around it for a significant period of time, which was never solved and has since been removed from the game. Stranger yet, players could spawn a television in the game that at random times between midnight and 3 a.m. would display the words wake up, it is dawn, and then proceed to show some cryptic imagery, and ends with an ambiguous poem about death. Lastly, on one of the mats by endlessly blasting a wall with explosives, one of the wall panels could eventually fall off, revealing its inner workings inside, which held a secret code among the pipes that ended up being a Discord invite code. On the Discord was a cipher that was Base64 that when converted to a PNG gave a QR code that provided an audio recording, which when viewed through a spectrogram had a blueprint on how to build a very elaborate and intricate gate shaper in the game that once built would teleport the player to a long hallway, which is unfortunately where the trail ends, leaving players stuck in this isolated, lonely environment. Unfortunately, given the creators can't seem to make up their mind what should or shouldn't actually still be in the game, constantly patching and changing things to this day, it's unclear if we'll ever get a straight answer to any of this, which is unfortunate considering it would have been nice knowing if there was some sort of method to the madness to whatever this nightmarish horror from hell was supposed to be. Bioshock Infinite. The Bioshock series we've certainly explored as far back as my very first mystery video, where I looked at a mysterious lighthouse on a mountain that could be found if you no clipped out of bounds in a random direction in one of the final sequences in the game. And thanks to Michael Arts through the OnHeader Discord, I now know that in addition to this environment, there are two more cut environments showcasing where more lighthouses would have appeared, including this space station that is eerily hiding this mysterious figure A posing in a suit and a hat. A more mystifying discovery, however, was found regarding a mystery data mine from the game. In Infinite, the main character, Booker DeWitt, arrives in the flying city of Columbia, 
and is immediately accused by the police of being the city's foretold false shepherd because of a mark on his hand. The false shepherd essentially being what the city has been told by their leader Comstock to be the devil. At a certain point in the adventure, the player is provided a choice when approaching a ticket seller who slowly becomes more suspicious. Yeah, just a minute, friend. Who you can either pull a gun on or keep demanding tickets from, the latter of which prompts him to stab a knife through your hand. If you were to get stabbed in the later scene, your protected Elizabeth would rip off a piece of her clothing and bandage your hand. Strangely, data miners found on the texture file of the bandage can be found an image of a devil, which never actually appears in the game. It's not known exactly why Satan is here, although it does almost look like a texture meant to wrap around a 3D object. It would also seem to be implying there's something actually demonic going on with Booker, considering this is located where Booker's bleeding from the hand and there also happens to be a mark that the city believes is a sign of the devil. It does seem strange to me though, seeing as Booker being the false shepherd is propaganda throughout the story, and his mark is even given a non-devilish explanation. So I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of this image was supposed to be or what it's trying to say. Then again, this is a game where nothing is as it seems, and I can vaguely see it in some way as a metaphor for Booker Booker's relationship with the game's antagonist Comstock. But pretty much all of that gets thrown out when I see something like this submitted by Bra Boys of a random statue of Comstock that bleeds when shot at just at the right angle. And I'm not sure how that one connects in terms of the actual story at all. But these elements definitely do a good job of upping the creepy as hell factor. That was odd. Tamashi. Thanks to Olivia Hayes for submitting these mysteries on oddheader.com. 2019's Tamashi is a satanic and mysterious horror game available on Steam. Adorned with occult imagery, witches, and unsettling scenes inspired by Japanese horror games of the 80s and 90s. Through the game, the player makes their way through a series of rooms solving puzzles in order to move forward. However, Olivia submitted some puzzles that still haven't been solved in the game, including this cipher that no one's managed to crack, an odd hidden room filled with strange vibrating dolls whose eyes follow the player, and most mysteriously, a hidden door past the boundaries of one of the levels that when entered appears to reveal a night vision camera of a random bedroom, and also displays the current date and time. The purpose of the event is currently unclear, and it's uncertain whose room we're looking into or if the footage at any point reveals anything. Additionally, Olivia pointed out that at one point in the game if you stand on the very edge of the environment in this spot, you can see an item that normally displays messages to the player that to this day nobody knows how to access, likely still beholding some sort of secret message for whoever managed to reach it. Hopefully this encourages somebody to do some cracking and get us over there because I would love to know if it has any insight to any of the strange mysteries revolving around the game. Though I wouldn't be surprised if whatever it has to say doesn't make things clear at all. Ultima 9. Ascension. Thanks to Hajime the Fool for submitting this for my Discord server. Ultima 9 was the final installment of EA's highly popular RPG franchise of the 90s. Your player character, the Avatar, doesn't even have to journey to Britannia where the game takes place for this nightmarish discovery. As at the beginning of the game, the Avatar wakes up in a modern home, despite the game taking place in a medieval setting. And Hajime found as soon as the game begins, the player can walk the Avatar into the kitchen, and then randomly open and shut the freezer door 10 times. My god. Apparently the Avatar keeps his victims in the freezer. Well that's nice to know. Just Cause 3. Thanks to the Plague Doctor, Hajime the Fool, and Sea Chameleon for submitting this to the Odd Header Discord. Just Cause 3 marked the point the series was destined to seal its fate as a parody of open world sandboxes, and in so included a huge number of easter eggs. Roland Listerman of the game's development team even said in an interview the team was told anything they wanted to hide in the game, they had to go ahead to do so. Which appears to be why Roland appears in the game himself. However, the most mysterious easter egg in the game involves a cryptic and out of place series of obelisks that can be found throughout the environment whose true purpose has gone unsolved to this day. Originally, only two obelisks were found in the game, which had cryptic pentagrams carved into them, which because are actually occurred are believed to be elder signs, symbols said to awaken the cosmic horror known as the Cthulhu in H.P. Lovecraft's notorious story The Call of Cthulhu. The Cthulhu being an enormous beast worshipped by cultists that's been sleeping beneath the sea for centuries said to ravish terror and destruction over the world when it's awakened until humanity is completely destroyed. Later, the Barbarian Sea Heist DLC added five more obelisks and ancient ruins that can be found out in the ocean, this time with eternal burning fires on them and a different set of symbols. The two letter combinations around the Elder Signs are thought to be a cipher, but this was never confirmed or solved. 
Another obelisk was found in the Mechland Assault DLC, where a round hatch was found at the weapon shipping yard port with a button that didn't do anything. However, another button could be found on a house on the cliffs behind the silo, and another in a house in the forest to the west, that when all pressed together opened the silo and revealed another obelisk. Players also reported that standing next to it for an extended period of time, you could hear suspicious audio that some believe may hold some sort of clue. Yet another button was found at another settlement in the same DLC known as Eden Station the Goose, that also when pressed in an interesting twist, didn't do anything at all. Years after the game's release, Ursaris on the Just Cause wiki discovered that after pressing the button, a second button can actually be found underground out of bounds nearby. Ursaris reported he was able to hover over it with a glitch but didn't seem to be able to interact with it, meaning we still have no idea what the button is supposed to do if we're still missing another step to properly activate it. Whatever's going on here, there's certainly something ominous surrounding this whole thing that remains to be solved. And since the game to date has never been fully decompiled and completely data mined, we really have no idea what else is lurking deep in the files of the game. Let's just hope that whatever we uncover isn't irritably awakened from its centuries-long slumber ready to serve humanity its endless pain and bleak annihilation. Doki Doki Literature Club 2017's Doki Doki Literature Club is a visual novel that follows a male high school student who joins his school literature club at the insistence of his childhood friend. The game is pretty well known for starting off like a normal dating simulator that gets progressively darker, eventually evolving into a horror game. The game also manages to break the fourth wall repeatedly, and at one point a hint in the game suggests the player looks inside the data of the game, as one of the files in the character folder has to be deleted in order to properly finish the game. However, much more curious players manage to find more discoveries in the data of the game that don't seem to directly relate to the story, that are only revealed when manipulating more character files in the data that only appear when you first install the game. For example, changing Monica's file extension from CHR to PNG results in a square surrounded by a circle of flames, which when zoomed in on the square reveals binary code that translates to a long cryptic message, which appears to be warning an unknown character about something ambiguous. Yuri's character files encoded base 64 text string that when decoded tells the story of a teenager that murdered somebody out of curiosity. And lastly, changing the Suki CRH file to a PNG reveals an abstract gray and white image. However, by inverting the colors and using the polar coordinates filter set to rectangular and polar, it reveals an image of a blonde woman with only the whites of her eyes showing. To this day, who the mysterious woman in the image is still unknown. But she definitely has that whole Queen of Hell look going for her. And thanks to Devil's Game for making this video possible. Be sure to check out the link down below to be one of the first to try a free episode of Devil's Game, a novel new storytelling app specially designed for phones and tablets. Devil's Game tells a cryptic and mysterious story through real-time text messages, emails, and other media, with clues that will lead you to actually searching online through the external web for secrets and discoveries and unraveling the puzzle. The story is told in episodes about a mysterious new phone craze that appears to be killing its users, as players are led to find a number of hidden easter eggs throughout websites on the internet that will reveal the deeper mysteries of Devil's Game, making Devil's Game a perfect fit if you're wanting to start investigating unsolved mysteries or start finding some easter eggs yourself. The link down below gives you the first episode for free, so give Devil's Game a go if you're ready to see just how far the mystery will really take you, once the worst that could happen. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and if you know of any other discoveries that you were certain came from hell, submit through oddheader.com, come join the Discord, or even send me a shout through Twitter or Reddit. Things might be a little slow right now as I'm about to make a move across the country, but after the move there's going to be a whole number of changes, and production and everything should actually start to turn around a lot faster, so in the upcoming season expect a lot more exciting things. Shout out to Anna Morris, Athanasius Decinos, Ash Photography, Bitwith27, Cody Brody Whitlow, Combat15 Bowl, Dead Plastic, Decider12, Deer Mid Crowley, Ed Moffat, Eddie Toxpin, Elite Sniper Bravo, Endergrub72, Flex, Fox M Cloud123, Jonathan A. All Ornalist, Mrs. Biscuits, Patrick Swayze, Price Primes Workshop, Ponage Cakes, Rage Spot, Rise Sparrow, Reed Della Rosa, Riley S, Scarities, Select, Sneaking J, SNS, Sputnik 1 Scat, Sasuke Akira, Sirsa Fox, Towerizer, Tylorco 7, Wade Murdoch, Yu Yu Kirby, and Xanceris for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.